We're here with a young man that uh, had some issues, and we're gonna—he's gonna tell us about it. What's your name? Yeah, uh, my name is Julian. So, what type of problem brought you to the office for the neurofeedback? Well, uh, basically, I was snowboarding, ended up doing a, a flip and hit my head and got a concussion. Um, to that point, it was—it's not my first rodeo with concussions. I've had three diagnosed, probably a lot more to be honest. So um, I uh, was very familiar with uh, what doctors said. They basically just said, you know, rest. We'll give you time off of school. Um, but uh, I was reading, and the more that I was reading, I began to understand that uh, there's some serious damage that's done. And I was trying to find if there was a treatment method for it. And everything that I was finding, it's like you have these no-name doctors hidden in, in the middle of nowhere, and. Uh, I was actually telling you about that and you told me about neurofeedback and uh, we talked a little bit about that and we decided to uh, give it a go and see if it would, uh, it would help me out with some of the symptomology I was experiencing with my concussion. And that was my next question. What are or were some of the symptoms that you were experiencing? Well, um, so I, I'm a very good academic student. I always got A's in all my classes, uh, at least the ones I tried in. Um, and uh, I noticed that um, I honestly didn't even think I had a concussion when the accident first happened. I broke my collarbone, and obviously that was uh, immediately what we noticed. Um, but I returned to school, and I was completely unable to focus. Um, I was not able to recall almost anything that we discussed in class. I could not study. I could not retain the information. Um, I just had a complete lack of attention, uh, loss of memory. Um, I it's just like I felt like uh, I was kind of like in a, a cloud all the time. Um, I couldn't really. We couldn't really do anything. I could kind of just sit there and crack jokes. And that, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, that part doesn't do you too much good academically, but right. <laughs> yeah, so that must have been a little bit, um, maybe even a little bit frightening. Well, I mean, at the time, uh, well, now that I think back on it, yeah, I mean, that was definitely a matter of concern. I could, uh, when me and my parents were talking, uh, that was something that they expressed. Um, at, at that time, I honestly thought that I was fine. I couldn't really, like, I wasn't even, criti I couldn't critically think through anything, so I wasn't critically thinking about what's happening in the situation. Oh, yes, there's a, there's a word for that. It's really long. It basically says, it means you don't recognize your own illness. Right. That's yeah. exactly where I was at, yeah. All right. There are the signs of decreased brain function that Julian was talking about, and the particular one we were concerned about Dating during the video was the last one. You want to try it? Anosognosia. Look, he's an expert at it. I've been practicing. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so we started some neurofeedback, and then how long did it take you to start noticing improvements in those particular issues that you were having? I would say that uh, I was... I, I, well, the first round of neurofeedback that we did, I had uh, some pretty... Um, what's the word, stereotypical results, right? Uh, I didn't have any crazy amount of change. And uh, I guess at that point, uh, I kind of started to notice so that things were wrong. Um, so in that aspect, I guess I got that awareness back. I, w I was starting to recognize that, like, oh my God, yeah, I, I can't retain anything. Um, I'm reading, I can't remember it. Uh, I, I literally, like, have issues focusing. So I got that awareness back. Through the um, about through those first 20 sessions, the last uh, we did after that, next 20 sessions we did, that's where I had a, a pretty big improvement. I got to the point that I was able to read and comprehend. I was back to the point that I could critically th think. I was starting to feel a lot more like my normal self at that point. Um, I would say that I felt maybe like 60, 50 percent better at that point. But I mean, I wasn't. I was actually able to do some of the things I was able to do with some proficiency, and. Uh, Afterward, uh, I believe we finished off with, uh, with ten, uh, 10 final sessions um, to try to even things out again, um, just trying to take care of uh, the lack of activity in the back of the brain and then at the end trying to tone down the inflammation at the front of the brain. And uh, after those last 10 sessions, I was pretty much good to go. I, was, uh, I had about four months of academic work to make up. Um, I was sitting down for six to eight hours a day studying and going and knocking out 12 quizzes in a day, getting, well, not, not A's at that point, but with that amount of load, I don't think anyone really could be proficient in that. But I was getting good grades even even with that massive amount of work. I was able to, uh, I actually started, on top of that, I started a um, NASM uh, um, personal training certification course um, alongside with that. 
as well as going through the whole college vetting process. So I was really, I got to the point that I was functional. I was able to do things, again, at a high proficiency. And perhaps in some aspects, I was actually a little bit better afterward than I was before. That's cool. Well, you did have three other concussions. And right. You know, the, the research shows that uh, four concussions actually increases your likelihood of having future early onset dementia. So it's a good thing that uh, you're taking steps to, you know, fix the areas that we found in issue. Right, so. and that was one of the biggest concerns, too, um, on my end. Um, just, I mean, from reading, uh, you can see it all the time with uh, these professional athletes. They get after they get so many concussions, and when even in the middle of their career, you can see them in interviews that they they can't even like uh, articulate their words. And um, I, I was in knowing that I had three diagnosed concussions, and knowing that I probably had a handful more. That was something I definitely didn't want to get to, especially you know me not even hitting uh, twenty years old, twenty years of age. That's not something I wanted to start battling. Not, not yet. <laughs> not ever. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the mind's a terrible thing to waste, that's for sure, you know. So I appreciate you uh, coming in, and um, I'm hoping that your story will encourage others to look into this viable alternative to really there isn't too much out there other than, like right. you said, rest. And you really need to re-exercise those areas of the brain you got injured so that they can grow uh, new neurons um, and new connections which is called neuroplasticity, and that's what uh, neurofeedback helps us do. Good deal. Thank you very much. Of course.